very excited to be here. And I, I want to share with you two pieces of research that we conducted over the last year. And, and both of them have, quite frankly, married up very nicely into a much bigger opportunity. Uh, our two previous speakers used the words inflection point. <laughs> you couldn't use a better statement to define what's going on in the transportation industry right now. So the AVA is made up of automotive manufacturers. We have General Motors, we have Ford Motor Company, we have a company you've never heard of called Magna International, we have FCA, Dow Chemical, Spartan Motors, all of them working together to do collaborative research on identifying use cases and value propositions for AVs. Now I'm going to give you a really quick tutorial on what we mean by AVs. There's an organization that we all work with in the automotive industry called the Society of Automotive Engineers. They have defined five levels of autonomy. We only focus on L4 and L5. There's nothing really higher than L5, but L4 is you may have a vehicle that is filled with semi-autonomous features. In fact, there may be cases in which you turn on the autonomy, right, to get from point A to point B but you still have a driver's, driver, we, a, a wheel, steering wheel, you still have a brake pedal, you still have an accelerator. When you move to level five, all of that goes away. All of it. So I'm going to talk to you about something that sounds the, probably the least sexy thing you'll hear today, which is a box on wheels. And this is a new era of transportation. We are at that inflection point to be able to do something that we've never done before in this industry and that's create a barrier-free vehicle. I'm gonna tell you what has fed this information into our organization and how we're looking at this. So what is this need around this autonomous vehicle? Why do we even consider doing something like this? Well, what we've realized is that through all the course of our research, when we've talked to the aging, uh, the senior living facilities, we've talked with Brookdale Senior Living, we did a fantastic piece of research. We worked with Andrew Smith there to talk with assisted living and independent living and geriatric care managers. When we talked with healthcare systems, when we talked with pharmacies, and believe it or not, when we've talked with cities and we've talked with the entertainment industry, they all want this vehicle for very, very specific reasons. They're all trying to serve this market need. Now, Bob mentioned all of these what we call ADOS features, right? They're semi-autonomous features like lane keeping and all of these other wonderful things. These are all the building blocks towards autonomy. So here's this barrier-free box on wheels. Why does it look this way, right? <laughs> Why do you have an opening on the side, on the back? What we're talking about is creating a vehicle that will enable people of various types of disabilities, whether they're physical or they're cognitive. They will be able to use this vehicle. Caregivers will be able to use this vehicle with seniors. And what's really interesting are the stories that we can tell based on the conversations that we had with our research. So we did Delphi interviews, we did panel interviews, and we kind of dug into the pain points around transporting people, getting them from point A to point B. Now, I will tell you that one of the most interesting stories that was shared with us related to this was the ability to self-park. This was the first time in all of the research that we've done in three and a half years that anyone ever told us a story that was emotionally based around AVs, and that was Andrew Smith. He gave me an example that basically said, listen, what we need to do is kind of provide continuous care, not leaving seniors at the side of the road while we go park a car, those sorts of things. He said, if you could just do this one thing for me, if that vehicle with a geriatric care manager or a physician's assistant could pull up underneath the portico of one of my facilities, that that individual could help the senior out of the vehicle and walk them, simply walk them into the building and get them where they need to go, you've changed my business because I don't have to have another individual meet me at the side of the vehicle and get that person in. So now we have a scenario where the vehicle can pull under the portico, 
we can continually carry that person into the, into, the, into the building, and that vehicle can go park itself. Now, here's something interesting going on. That technology already exists. We have the ability to do that with existing vehicles on the road. But here's the issue, and many of you know and can relate to this. The vehicles that you're working with today are very likely cobbled together through a specialty manufacturer. They still have stairs, they have lifts. What we're talking about is a vehicle that can actually measure the height of the sidewalk and drop down to its level, so it's a zero entry. So anyone can get in, and it can be used by multiple forms or multiple types of people who need this. Now, I'm gonna talk about the other industries that need a vehicle like this, because in the automotive in industry, this is a numbers game. If I just need 100,000 of these vehicles, 200,000 of these vehicles, my automotive manufacturers can't rationalize starting with a clean sheet of paper and building a vehicle from the ground up. It needs to be millions of vehicles. So what we're attempting to do over the next year is to identify all of the use cases and how many vehicles are needed that need to be barrier free. So one of the first things that we did is we talked with healthcare systems. And one of the first companies that we talked to was Henry Ford Health System in the metropolitan Detroit area, big hospital system. One of the most interesting things they said to us, and it hit us like a brick, <laughs> was the fact that they wanted to move to an outpatient model in the next 10 years. That is completely and utterly driven by making sure that they can drive compliance with patients. They don't want readmission. They get dinged by the insurance company for readmission. So what they're looking for is compliance. How do I get them not just to take their medications, but get them to the doctor's office, to do testing, to do all of the things that they need to do? Now, what they're doing today already is they're working, as many of you may be in this room, working with Lyft and Uber to arrange for travel, to drive compliance, to make sure that they can meet those goals around an outpatient model. What's really interesting about that is that they're not the only ones. And what they talked about was driving efficiency into the journey. What do I mean by that? Well, that means that when you get picked up at the door and there may be a um, community care person in that vehicle waiting for you, there may be a geriatric, geriatric care manager, there may be a physician's assistant. When you go from point A to point B, we're going to drive efficiency into that journey. We're going to take your blood pressure. We're going to weigh you. By the way, the automotive industry has already created a seat that weighs everybody, just so you know. So all of that, making it HIPAA compliant, doing all of those wonderful things so we can drive efficiency into the model between point A and point B. It's not somebody concentrating on driving the vehicle, it's somebody engaging with the senior, engaging with the patient and driving efficiency in there. So beyond the healthcare industry, cities, cities are extremely interesting, interested in AVs. Why? Because it enables equity, because we can create mobility equity for disenfranchised populations, seniors, those with disabilities, getting them out of their neighborhoods, getting them not just to the hospital or the doctor's office, but quite frankly, to jobs. Getting them to jobs, lifting up entire neighborhoods because now they have mobility. Believe it or not, <laughs> the entertainment industry wants a barrier-free vehicle. Why do they want a barrier-free vehicle? Well, I want you to think of the Walt Disney Company massive, massive uh, facilities in the Central Florida area, in Southern California, all of their customers. They want to serve all of their customers. That means everyone with a disability. And they want to be able to transport them between hotels and restaurants and parks. They want to enable that sort of thing for their guests. And quite frankly, when you talk about universal design, when you talk about creating a barrier-free vehicle, you're talking about a vehicle that can serve everyone. Because if you build and design a vehicle for people with physical and cognitive um, disabilities, you've created a vehicle for every member of the population. 
So why is this so emotional? Well, when we went down and we were talking with our assist people in assisted living, when we were talking with independent living, when we were talking with the geriatric care managers, they, they brought to our attention several things that seem so important and quite frankly are a does when you actually step back and you look at them. But enabling independence, the continuation of the ability to go wherever I want to go when I want to go. That is so important, so important. It also ties in with socialization. There was a gentleman who was in independent living who still had his driver's license, still owned his car, absolutely loved to drive. But he gave us an instance, a, a, a for instance, around how he would use autonomy, and it was significant. He said, listen, I would love to be able to go to downtown Nashville with a group of my friends in my car, drive them down there, have dinner. The only problem is, when we're all done with dinner, it's dark outside. It may be raining. It may be congested. I don't want to drive home, so I don't do that anymore. He said, if I had an AV and I had selectable autonomy, I would drive everyone down there, and when we got out of the restaurant, I would turn autonomy on, I would set my destination, and we'd all go home. And I'm going to tell you this. If you're ever in a car with me at night during the rain, during a rainstorm, you will wish to God you had an AV. <laughs> So this is also freeing to caregivers. 27% of caregivers worry about transportation and getting their patients to and from appointments. Just to walk in the mall, they, they need transportation and they don't want to plan 72 hours out for those trips, which in many cases they have to. So this leads us to this clean sheet opportunity. I need to identify in the next 12 months a two million two million vehicle opportunity. If I do that, if we all come together and we do that, we can do this. Thank you. <laughs>